have a major boost with John Collins back to take his position on the left side of midfield. But with Steve Archibald and Gareth Evans out, the big question is who will partner Keith Houchin up front? Hibs will have made a major investment in Brian Hamilton, signed for a quarter of a million pounds from St Mirren, 22 years old, and one for the future undoubtedly in the eyes of his manager, Alec Miller. There's Keith Houchin, he cost £300,000 from Coventry in March, scored in his debut against Hearts, but has found goals hard to come by since then. So there's the Rangers line-up without Chris Woods, but with Bonnie Ginsberg there. Gary Stevens is fit to play it right back after passing a test on his calf injury. So there's Bonnie Ginsberg, the Israeli international. 22 caps he has, signed for £200,000, making his first league appearance for Rangers. Paul Johnston making his first appearance for Rangers in an away match in the league, still looking to open his competitive account after his £1.5 million transfer from Nantes. Referee this afternoon, Mr Hugh Williamson from Renfrew. As the match gets underway with Rangers playing down the hill with a very fierce wind behind them. from Goff, there's Houchin Butcher using his strength there to make that challenge right back by Stevens so Bonnie Ginsberg gets the chance to settle in Premier Division football off the head of Johnston here's McCoyst Good link up again, an attack from Rangers. Johnston's headed and McCoy's looking very sharp. There was the ball played on by Johnston. McCoy's trying to find room for the shot, didn't get real power into it, and Goro made a good save. There's Houchin. Well beaten by Butcher. Back it goes from Walters to Munro. Hunter doing well in the air for Hibbs. Wilkins and McCoy back towards Walters. Fine tackle that by Kane. Next defence keeping its shape. Wilkins. Stevens to Steven. McCoy back towards Walters. Oh, challenging fiercely. This Monroe now Wilkins. Walters deflected there by Johnston that could have been dangerous oh Johnston looking very alert inside the box Walters lining up the shot there was Johnston trying to deflect that beyond Gorham challenge was by Trevor Stephen on Snedden before going across very upset by the linesman's verdict but that's a Rangers throw Stevens waiting for Terry Butcher to get into the box. There's Butcher, he's the target all right, doing well to get ahead to the ball. Back this in towards Walters. Away from Kane, who was held there right on the edge of the box by Paul Kane. The referee's giving the free kick right on the edge of the box. Well, this is very close indeed. A clear foul, there's no question about that. And the infringement was indeed just outside the penalty area. Rangers were hoping for a penalty from that. That thing is clearly correct, though. Well, wasted by Wilkins. There's Ian Ferguson. Well, a good strike by Ferguson. Johnson is closing in, looking for the rebound. Ali and Ferguson had lots of shooting power, particularly in that right foot, and wouldn't assist it. This was tricky for Gorham. Golf to one against Hutchin. Contest that wheel against Butcher in the air. Well, 
Mitchell looking for a colleague in space. Hochin does well. This is Orr. Taking out Kane. Now Collins. Kane towards Weir. Here's Hochin. Keith Hochin for him. Rangers, Wilkins playing it wide, Trevor Stephen with the cross, the deep one, the header on here from Richard Goff, look at this effort from Morris Johnston, and the save from Gorham. Wilkins plays it forward, Walter has beaten the offside trap, great chance for Rangers, there's McCoist, well that was down to the position of Gorham, fine move again from Rangers, Walters released on the right, he was onside, heading for the byline, cutting this back, Coyce controlled it, look at the way Gorham cut down the line. Very calm figure, the hips captain Andy Gorham, and this time, half-time whistle goes, hips go off, greatly relieved, they have scored the only goal. A very difficult first half. Keith Houchin was the scoring hero. And a fine piece of finishing it was. Taking possession just outside the box. Easing himself in a shooting position and rifling that shot beyond Bonnie Ginsberg in the Rangers goal to give Hibbs the lead. Rangers having... So Hibbs now playing downhill with a very strong win behind them. So a totally different match now for both sides in the second half. Neil Cooper and Ali McCoy clashing over there on the far touchline. Well, it looks as though there's trouble for Cooper. Well, that appears to develop out of virtually nothing. Neil Cooper trying to explain himself to referee Hugh Williamson. It certainly will not prevent him receiving a booking at least. 
a bit of a dispute over the over the throw. Scarcely merited that kind of treatment. And Neil Cooper sullies what has otherwise been an outstanding performance in defence for Hicks. Wilkins playing it in, it's touched on by Johnson. There's Walters backing into Gordon Hunter, committing a foul, which has given Hibbs the free kick inside their own box. Jones did a tough time with Keith Houchin in the air so far in the match. There's Munro. Neat turn by Johnston. That's for McCoy to Glasgow Sneddon. Well, the athleticism of Alan Sneddon, very important for Hibbs. Good build up this. Johnston turning well, playing it through the gap. McCoy racing after the ball, and Sneddon got there just in time. Houchin holding off Butcher. Waiting now for support to arrive. Good running again by Houchin. Fine play by the big striker. Reading that out of nothing all by himself. Showing a tremendous amount of confidence, close control, and shooting power. Collins, neat sidestep there for Wilkins. He's brought down by Ferguson. Well, two of the great emerging talents in Scottish football in direct opposition, John Collins and Ian Ferguson. Certainly is some battle in the middle of the field. There's Paul Kane with a free kick. In for Graham Mitchell. In Ferguson, trouble! Ricky Weir makes it two. Four minutes into the second half. Jubilation again for the Hibs fans. Bonnie Ginsberg hangs his head. It was undoubtedly his error. Never got to the pitch of that ball. It came off Mitchell. There was Mickey Weir. To steer it into the empty net. And Hibs go two in front. The layoff came from Johnston. It was intended for Ferguson. early this time, Johnston nods it down that's Stephen and Kane with a pass back, directed there by Andy Gorham who told him exactly where to put it 
promising again for Rangers. Look at this delicate header down by Johnston to Trevor Stephen. The shot well blocked by Hunter. And then Paul Kane being directed to play that way of the target for Andy Gordon. Yes, we're again, a great chance for him stop. Ricky Weir holds his head, that surely would have clinched the match. Consternation created in that ring of defence again by the high clearance. Weir creating his space for himself and pulling the ball. Kane and Johnston together. Here's Neil Cooper. Checking his bearings carefully before sending that out of play. Mark Walters, fine cross, that goes Goff. Richard Goff at his best, arriving late in the box for the header. This is a superb outswinging cross from Mark Walters. Johnston couldn't get to it. In came Richard Goff and a fine save again from Goff. Look away from Ferguson, here's Mitchell. Hamilton chasing Monroe. Acceleration from Stuart Monroe. Brian Hamilton with a throw. Yes, Houchin. Back with Paul Kane. An awkward one for Ginsburg. The trouble again. Turned away by Stephen. Well, it's a treacherous day for goalkeepers in all fairness to Bonnie Ginsberg every goalkeeper in the country would dread this kind of ball with the wind causing all these problems and Rangers get the ball to Sheffield just the time by McCoy here's Trevor Stephen running into trouble he was brought down by Hunter set piece now for Rangers to exploit Ten minutes of the match remaining as Andy Gorham organises his wall, asking for four players. Against the wind, this is a difficult strike for any of the Rangers players. It played short by Ferguson to Stephen. And that just about sums up the Rangers' day. It's going to be a free kick to Hibbs for offside inside the box, but what an effort this was by Gary Stevens. Thundering that off the inside of the post. Would have been to see if that goal would have been allowed to stand had, had hit the net. But Hibbs hustling very well indeed, denying a lot of space, particularly in the middle of the field. Now it's funneling back to the edge of the box as Wilkins tries to thread the pass through for Johnston. Stevens, now Stephen. That's a good cross. Bravely turned away by Kane. something which really doesn't get enough attention in my view the quality of this defensive header by Paul Kane well that really was important for him this is Rhea now Kane Collins and Kane retaining possession it's Hamilton well Hibbs fans are loving this the way Hibbs are retaining possession in the closing moments Checking his watch carefully now, looking towards his linesman. The whistle will go at any second now. And there it goes. Hip the winners by two goals to nil. Mickey Weir getting a vital second goal early in the second half to add to the goal scored by Keith Houchin in the first half. The twin spearhead doing the damage for Hibbs, but their commitment, their organisation, and their superb performance in defence setting up the opportunity to win two points and to leave Rangers pointless after two league matches. Who would have believed it? Mickey, you're one half of a little enlarged partnership up front today. How did you feel about that? Oh, it's OK. Keith, he works hard for me, you know, and he gets sweet flicks on that I can get on to. But yeah, obviously, centre forward's not my, my position, but you just play where you play, you know. Is that the first time you played with him up front? Yeah, apart from practice games that we worked on last week, that's the first time we played with him, yeah. There was some resolve for you. How do you recall the goals coming around, the first one particularly from Keith? 
Well, the first one was just, uh, I don't know if really, I hit some of the shot, and uh, it just hit my foot and landed to someone. And Keith, next day I knew the ball was in the net, Keith had hit it and it was in the net, and uh, when they go in, you don't know who scores. Well, you could care about the second one, because you scored it, how do you remember that one? It's just a long ball in the air, the keeper came out for it and just landed at my feet. I just turned and hit it, lucky as net was there, it went in. Well, my reckoning that was your first goal for more than a season, is that Yeah, right? that's right. Uh, well, last season was a disaster for me, I had a bad injury. But uh, I'm hopeful that's all over when I can start again. Now, you could have doubled your tally, of course, <laughs> later on in that second half. How did you miss that great chance later on? Well, I don't want to talk about it like that. I just felt my left foot, and it's not my greatest defeat. Uh, I just beat the boy, hit it as hard as I could, and I looked up and about by the post, and it was over and done. Me. How important was you? Was it for you to be part of a Hibs team beating Rangers, the champions at this time of the season? It's not just a point of beating Rangers. You know, we got to beat everyone at home. Uh, you got to get your your points in at home. You know, uh, Rangers is just an hard game. Uh, there's no special about beating Rangers. So they're all there to beat. You just go out there and do it. I felt everybody did their job properly and uh, the two boys up front worked really hard for us. What was your strategy before the match? Well, our strategy was to close Rangers down quickly. If we give Rangers time in the ball, they're very good players. They've got quality throughout their whole team and uh, if you give players of quality time, they can play. And what uh, are the implications, do you think, for Hibs of a result like this so early in the season? Well, I, I feel it was uh, a follow-on from last week. At Aberdeen, I felt we, we contained them in the second half and maybe could have got a goal. Uh, I was very disappointed to not come away with a point there. We've had our first league game at home against Rangers and we've got two points. It was important as a club to get two points on the board quickly. Now you had a problem before the match with no Steve Archibald and no Gareth Evans through injury and you played Mickey Weir. What was the thinking behind that? Well, I felt that uh, Michael playing on a side might have been closed down quickly. Uh, we played him through the middle and he uh, worked with uh, Keith and did very well for us. Uh, he posed them problems and he scored the second goal. Is that a combination you may persevere with? No, I'd rather have a Archibald 